Okay, welcome to lesson 4.5, prisms and cylinders. We're now going to move away from the surface area and we're going to move into the volume. We're going to start again with the volume of a right rectangular prism, the box. And you should have in front of you 72 little tiny building blocks, little cubes that we can actually create stuff and go through it. So what I want you to do is you're going to go through and build these with me as I do this. So I would like you to take um, a bunch of blocks and I want you to make a 2 by 5 grid as you see in the picture right here. A 2 by 5. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue teaching. Whenever, every time I tell you to make the grid you're going to have to pause it so that we don't have this thing with a lot of wait time in it, okay? So you've got your 2 by 5 created. How many blocks are there? Well, if you take and you count them, you'll see that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now remember, we're talking blocks, not sides. So there's 10 blocks there. So what is the volume? Well, since each one is a cube and a centimeter cube, it is 10 centimeter cubes. And remember, the floating 3 is for cube. The volume is equal to the base of 5 by 2. So multiply by the number of layers, which is the height. So if I only have one layer here, that's only one of these. So it's basically 2 by 5 and there's one height. So this is the base and this is the height. We're going to get to this as this is going to change as we go. Okay, so to calculate the surface area, sorry, the volume of this particular one, we're going to find the area of the base. Now the area of the base is 5 by 2 or 2 by 5. And we have a height which is one block tall. So 5 by 2 is 10 times 1 means my volume is 10 centimeter cubes. All right, if you turn the page, now I want you to do the same thing, only I want you to stack them too high. Make two layers. Now the volume, pause it or whatever, and then come back. The volume of this one, you have to count how many cubes. Well, you know that you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in each layer. So if there's 10 up here in this layer, there's also 10 in that layer. That means we now have a total of 20 blocks. That means the volume is 20 centimeter cubes. So how do we find the volume? Well, we found the area of the base, which is 5 by 2. And we multiplied by its height, which is now 2 stacks tall. So 5 by 2 is 10, and 10 times 2 is 20. We're working in centimeter cubes, so that's what that looks like. So add a third layer now and pause. How many blocks do we have now? Well, we know that one layer has 10, another layer has 10, and the final layer has 10, so we know that we have 30 centimeter cubes here, or 30 blocks. So what's the volume? I think I just wrote it by accident. Okay, so to calculate the volume, we're still 5 by 2, or 2 by 5, but now we are 3 tall. So 5 times 2 is 10, times 3 is 30, and we're working in centimeter cubes. Now, how could you use this to calculate the volume of a rectangle if you didn't have any blocks? Well, it's quite simple. All you need to do is to find the area of the base and multiply it by how tall it is. So. To sort of create a simple formula, my volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. You'll notice I have what's called a subscript here. That's the base lowered down below the line. So what I need to do is take a look at this question to find my volume. I'm going to shorten that back up to V. My area of my base is given to me as 18, and my height is given to me as 2. So in this question, my volume is 18 times 2, which is 36, and I'm working in centimeters, so it is centimeter cubes. Now we're going to use this because sometimes you get shapes that you, uh, uh, you, don't, you can't calculate that very, very easily because you could have a base which was a pentagon or something. And they just told you that the pentagon was, say, 50, and it was 10 tall, then it would just be 50 times 10. So and we're also going to use that when we do cylinders, because we're going to be using a circle, and that's going to be the circular base. You're going to be told that the circular base down here has an area, and you multiply it by its height, and that will give you your volume of a cylinder. So let's go to the next step. Sometimes the area of the base is not given. Like sometimes it's just given to you as length and width. So instead of getting this, they're going to give you this instead. Now that means that our volume is going to be length times width times height. Now you don't have to spell the whole word out. All you need to do is go LWH. Length is L 
book W is, is width and H is height. So here's our formula, it's our, our diagram. I got my length, which is L, my width, which is W, and my height, which is H. Sometimes you do a scripting L, doesn't matter, as long as it's an L. So to find the volume of this one, I'm going to lead you to the first one. Formula is simple, volume is length, length times width times height. So my length is 4, my width is 2, my height is 2. So then you would just take your brain or your calculator and go 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. And of course we don't have units here, so it's going to be units cubed. It should be a U. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. All right, uh, this is a little bit trickier. Is a big question, but we'll, we're going to have you do it piece by piece with me. A transport truck has a large enclosed trailer in the shape of a rectangular prism. The Walmart warehouse wants to move a large volume of televisions from the East Coast to the Central Canada. A television box has a dimension of 1.2 meters for its length, a width of 0.4 meters, a height of 1 meter. The truck trailer has a dimensions of 20 meters long, 3 meters wide, and 3.5 meters tall. What we need to do is two things first. Find the volume of the truck, find the volume of the television box. So let's start with the volume of the truck. The volume of my truck is right here. There's my length, there's my width, and there's my height. You need to start with the formula. Volume is equal to length, width, height. So pause the recording, and what I'd like you to do first is to find the volume of that truck. Okay. Now that you're done, let's take a look. We have to take a look at the length, which is 20, the width, which is 3, and the height, which is 3.5. Now you use your calculator to find this, and you're going to get 210, and we are in meters, so it's meter cubed. So that's how many cubic meters can fit in the truck. Now I need to know the volume of one of the actual televisions. So the actual width and length of the televisions are given up here. The length is 1.2. The width is 0 0.4, and the height is 1. So what I'd like you to do is calculate the volume of one of the television blocks. Pause the recording and do that. All right. Formula, length, width, height. Length is given to us, 1.2. Width is given to us, 0 0.4. Height is given to us, 1.0, or just 1. So your volume... If you have to take on your calculator, 1.2 times 0 0.4 times 1 means that one of them is 0 0.48 cubic meters. So it's not quite half a cubic meter. Now, we need to find out how many boxes or how many televisions can fit in one truck. Well, we have to figure out the number of TVs um, sorry, that will fit in. So to do that, our first step is we have to take the volume of the truck, We want to divide it by the TV volume. So how many 0.48s will fit in 210 cubic meters? So in this case, you're going to have 210 divided by 0.48. Doing the calculations, that gives you a weird number, 437.5 TVs. So how many can the truck transport? Well, this is where we come in, into a difference between a mathematical answer and a common sense answer. And this is where your common sense, is common sense answer goes in your statement, but your mathematical answer goes in your calculation. You can only fit 437 whole TV boxes in there. You cannot put 0.5 of a TV in, otherwise the door won't close. You can't round it up because it won't fit in. The door will just be a little bit larger, you know, kept open even further. So you have to round down 437 televisions. Now, I have to tell you that there's a flaw with this type of question. We're assuming that the length, width, and height match perfectly for the boxes. It doesn't work that way. But for our calculation, we're just going to work like this. So why do you not round the number of television boxes up? it would force the TV to hang out the back. It 
wouldn't fit in because there's no room. Okay, so now you know how to do volume. Let's have you complete the assignment. If you have any questions, go back and watch the assignment again. And on 4.6, the next lesson, we're going to be doing volumes of uh, triangular prisms. So, again, we'll see you in the next lesson.